Just before Christmas 1880, the Utah and Northern Railway was completed in Montana. And from that moment on, there was an unprecedented growth and prosperity as a result of mainly copper ore being dug up and turned into copper. By 1882, it was 9 million pounds. By 1896, it was 210 million pounds. It's no wonder that in, at that time, Butte came to be known as the richest hill on earth. There were 8,000 people working there. Their monthly salary in today's costs was 40 million. 25% of the world's copper came from Montana. And copper was truly king. However, time went on. The rest of the world developed, particularly Africa, Zambia, and South America, Chile, and Peru. And over time, Montana's position in copper faded. But we now have in Montana places where copper still is king. If you walk up to the top of Mount Helena, look east, over the cathedral, in the distance you'll see a black slag pile when it's not covered in snow. And next to that, and not having anything to do with that slag pile, are a set of white buildings where recycled copper comes back to Montana. It's turned into copper powders which are exported around the world in a dominant way. What market am I talking about? It's shipping. The world fleet consists of about 85,000 ships. And here are just a few of them. Top left, you've got the container ship, which take TEUs, 20-foot equivalent units, around the world. Any moment in time, there are supposed to be between 5 and 6 million of these TEUs on the seas. Sometimes, as the train rumbles through Helena, you'll see them on the trucks, either one high or sometimes two high. Next to that is the world's largest oil tanker that was ever built. It's actually been scrapped now, so it's no longer in existence. Huge, 600,000 deadweight ton. Bottom left, you've got the ferry business. This is a fast ferry that goes across the river plate between Montevideo and Buenos Aires at well over 50 knots and taking passengers across the, those two big cities. And then here is your own latest, biggest aircraft carrier, the Gerald Ford. Now, all these ships have one thing in common. They are big objects moving through a dense fluid, and that requires a lot of effort. But not only have they got to resist the water, there are an amazing array of species that live in the sea. Here are, are two particular types. We heard about algae in the morning. That's the one that's on the left-hand side there that's sometimes called marine grass. It can grow up to three or four inches on the side of a ship. It produces tremendous drag. You can see that yacht there. It's got a huge amount of what's called fouling on it, weighing the boat down. And then on the right side, you've got barnacles. This picture I took was in, the, in Rio de Janeiro, and the barnacles are nearly the size of my hand. So these are all slowing down ships. So what's that got to do with copper? Well, in the late 18th century, Sir Humphrey Davy, who invented the Davy light for miners, discovered that if you panel out copper and put it on the side of a ship, they fixed it with copper nails, things didn't grow on the copper. So copper prevented fouling. And Indeed, it's said that it changed history. This particular battle was the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, where the British fleet, because it had copper bottoms, that's the original of the phrase, copper bottom, they had these ships which could go faster than the French fleet, and therefore, it was a British victory. If you now go to any shipyard in the world and see the ships that are there, this is a particularly big one, a 300,000 deadweight ton tanker, and you can see on the bottom left, a little person in a cherry picker taking some samples. These are enormous. They use thousands of gallons of anti-fouling paint. The shipping around the world uses copper. 90% of ships around the world use copper, and a predominant part of that is copper coming out of East Helena. But shipping is remote from Montana. Let me bring you to a story that is much more up to date. The Wildlife Institute produced this report at the end of last year, invasive species in Montana, in particular Canyon Ferry Lake. We're talking here about zebra mussels. They're small mussels, and they have a, a black and white stripe on them, which hence the name zebra. These 
were originally started in Russia and Ukraine. They were bought on ships into the St. Lawrence Seaway, then into the Great Lakes, and now they're spreading through North America. Copper is a good way to prevent the growth or the existence of these species, these, these zebra mussels, on, on the bottom of boats so they don't get transferred. These are such a problem because they block up pipes. They grow very, very quickly, and they can completely, and grates and pipes can, can get completely blocked, and it takes a lot of effort to clean them. So, copper, in summary, it saves fuel. Indeed, you could call it one of the greatest fuel savers on the earth. It reduces greenhouse gases, consequently, and it's good for prevention of invasive species. So that's where it is king now. Let me just talk finally about a little area that might be useful in the future for copper. Hospitals. If you go into a hospital, it's a chance, there is a chance you will come out with an illness that you didn't go in with. And that is what's called HAIs, Hospital Acquired Infections. Studies have been shown that 80% of HAIs are acquired through touch surfaces. Now, in this picture, there are a number of those, the door handles, the chairs, the bed rails, the computer, the drip stand, the sink trays. These are all areas where germs can live up to months, not just days, but weeks, but months. And in between cleanings, you can pick up from someone else germs. Now, copper has been studied by, in, the, in this context, and the world expert is Professor Bill Keevil. And he has shown that copper is very effective against almost all hospital-acquired infections. And if you look in his uh, university building, there's a reading there that says, if touch surfaces comprised copper alloys, a great many lives would be saved in hospitals. Trials have been carried out in the United States. This is one that was done in Virginia, where the touch surfaces are all made of copper. You can see the bed rails, the, the, the tray, the trolley there. And it was shown in this study that compared to a room that didn't have any copper touch surfaces, the room that did have co copper touch surfaces had 80% less transmission of HAIs. So, in summary, Butte, 1800s, copper was king there. Currently, copper is king in East Helena, from East Helena. And in the future, hopefully, more and more hospitals will put copper to help prevent transmission of HAIs, hospital-acquired infections.